Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Ontario Soil Network and the Mosaic Company. Bernard Tobin on the Soil School here today. Um, we're going to talk about um, soil nutrients, um, specifically uh, sulfur. And to do that, we're joined by Ross Bender from Mosaic. Ross, thanks for joining us on Real Agriculture. Good afternoon, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Hey, when um, when it comes to soil fertility, um, quite often we think about the macros. We focus on the macros, N, P, and K. Um, it's also micros. Where does sulfur fit in there? A macro? Sulfur is a macronutrient, sort of. So there are there are buckets of macronutrients. The the primary macronutrients, the nutrients we know, N, P, and K. And then there are the secondary macronutrients. Uh, they're still important. They're just needed in slightly lower quantities. Uh, things like sulfur, calcium, and magnesium. And then sort of beyond that, as you mentioned, the micronutrients are things that are needed in pretty small quantities, but nonetheless are very important. Um, and, and we're all aware of many of those. But yeah, sulfur is a macronutrient. Yeah. So how do we diagnose sulfur deficiency in, in, in wheat and corn, for example? What are we looking for? Yeah, so when we, conventionally speaking, when we go out to the field and we see um, variations in color throughout the field, there are two nutrients that are primarily responsible for giving uh, plants the nice lush green color that we're familiar with. And those two nutrients are nitrogen and sulfur. Uh, so if we see significant areas of a cornfield or a wheat field, for example, that look yellowed or pale, um, it may be due to the fact that there is a shortage of nitrogen and sulfur. Uh, ways to confirm that perhaps would be through the use of a tissue test. That's a great in-season diagnostic technique. Um, soil tests are also helpful, um, but remember those nutrients are mobile, so there's some things you need to consider there. But yeah, um, nice green dark fields are those colors because of adequate nitrogen and sulfur. Let's talk rates. Um, what are the recommended rates um, for wheat and corn, and you know what type of response can we expect? Uh, it depends. Uh, and I wouldn't be agronomist if I didn't say that answer. So it, it depends on the yield level and, and the crop. And, and obviously the answer is the higher the yield level, the more you need. Um, for corn, the answer is you know, pretty simple. Um, is you target, you know, for example, on corn, for every uh, 10 bushels of corn, that crop will take up one unit of sulfur. Um, for soybeans, that's in the one bushel for every one unit of sulfur for every three to four bushel range. Um, and, and wheat is, you know, requires a significant amount as well. But honestly, for, for most of our crops like soybean and wheat, if we can apply 10 to 15 units of sulfur, that's probably a pretty good step in the right direction. Corn that yield, or excuse me, the yield that we achieve as a result of it might be necessitating a little bit more, 20 to 25 perhaps. But in addition to crop and yield level, it's also highly dependent upon soil type, soil characteristics, organic matter, things of that sort. Mm. Let's talk environmental conditions. Um, concerns about sulfur mineralization and deficiency always seem to crop up in Ontario in, in those two, you know, those cooler springs. Um, you know, how important is environmental? Yeah, it's an important consideration. Um, organic matter in the soil, remember, releases three key nutrients nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And in order for that organic matter to release nutrients, you need adequate moisture and temperature. Um, those are also the two main ingredients for crops to grow. So if you have adequate moisture and temperature, not only is your crop growing, that organic matter is releasing nutrients at the same time. So when you have ideal conditions for plant growth and development, that organic matter is releasing those nutrients sort of in synchronization with, with what that plant needs. What about um, in Ontario this year when you have the, those cooler conditions? Anything we can do or, you know, do we need to be out there and, and checking you know, mineralization and release? What do we need to do? Yeah, that, that's, a good, that's a good question. Um, the advantage of having a comprehensive sulfur program in place will limit the challenging effects of a less than ideal environmental sort of situation. Um, as an example, I'm sort of putting on my sales hat here now. We have a nutrient source on the market called, it's a phosphate product that's fortified with sulfur. It's called Microessentials. Uh, it has a fast release form of sulfur in it and a, a slow release form of sulfur, uh, elemental sulfur. Sulfate based forms of sulfur, that's the technical term, sulfate based forms are immediately available when you put it down. 
there's nothing fancy the soil needs to do to make it available. You put it down, the plant roots intercept it, and everybody's happy. Um, there's a second source in that nutrient source called uh, elemental sulfur, and that has to be converted. Uh, it's called oxidation, but it needs to undergo a little uh, biological transformation. It just takes a little bit of time. And that's a slower release form, and that hedges your bets against some significant rainfall, which might push a soluble form deeper into the profile. But it's also a slow release form that helps ensure that you have what you need late season during rainfall, which is the most important time to have that sulfur available. So, Ross, final question, and that is, you know, when we get sulfur right, what type of yield responses can we expect? You know, can as I say, the payoff? Yeah, uh, the the yield responses can be quite phenomenal, uh, provided you have a really good system in place. The pH is right, and P and K, those boxes are sort of checked. You have a good hybrid. When you, when you have the foundation in place, then other things matter, and oftentimes one of those other things is sulfur. And on corn, it's not um, unlikely for us to see yield responses because of a better microessential source, for example, or better comprehensive sulfur management. Um, yield responses of easily in the five to 10 bushel an acre range. Um, wheat that would expect in the four to six bushel an acre range, that's not uncommon to see. And soybeans in the two to three or up to four or five bushel an acre range. And that, that would be a, a reminder comment that would maybe make is, there's, there's very few crops that we grow today that wouldn't stand to benefit from just a little bit of additional sulfur. There's a number of reasons why that is, but because of the yield levels we're targeting and achieving on soybean and the need for season long, especially late season availability of that sulfur on soybean, um, I'd encourage you to try some, if you're looking for something to new to try the next growing season, put a little sulfur on beans. I think you're going to be surprised. Awesome. Hey, uh, Ross, some great insights. Um, Great to have you on the Soil School. Uh, Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, sir. Good luck to everyone this year.